Thank you very much. Good afternoon, and uh, thanks for your attention and your time. I have a presentation for you. I called it the cuckoo in the bidding process. Uh, why or when the manufacturer loses against itself, because this happened several times to me and some other companies I know. So I think there's a need to talk about. We also had this in some talks this morning here about sustainability and the open source development and all that stuff. So I think um, it's... Uh, a nice addition to that. Um, to introduce myself, Per Heinlein, I am in open source and Linux for more than 30 years. We are the owner and founder of Mailbox.org, maybe you will know it, and also about the next generation video conference system, OpenTalk. So we are a Linux system consulting company, a training academy, and also a manufacturer, which brings us to the position that we are in the bidding process with public customers. So my, my internal DNA is... Uh, digital sovereignty and data privacy, but I think this is maybe something we all, everybody shares here in this room. So to start, the open source software for sure is free. You don't have to pay for it. At least this is what they have told for 20 years or what they believe out there. It's made from universities, from freaks and nerds sitting somewhere coding all this stuff. So don't pay for it. Um, you can simply use it, which is maybe true um, most of the open source software is free, and especially for community, there's mo mostly a free community license, but maybe not for the commercial part of the open source software, because a lot of parts of the open source software we have out there has been built by commercial companies, and they have employees, they need finances, they have to pay their people, and for sure it is a business model. I can promote my software as open source, I can make it open source, but at the end, we need money to work, also my company. Um, in my case, personally, I spend several million dollars, run about seven million dollars in open talk, so this is nothing we can do just for fun. There is a business model behind of open talk or what we are doing. And also, our companies at the Open Source Business Foundation here in Germany, more than 200 companies, we have around about um, 95,000 employees, there are some big players, part of the OSBR, and, um, but for sure this is an econ economical um, big impact, this is a big business, for sure we have to work. And those companies, especially in Germany, are also mid-range companies, family-owned offices, so the money that is paid here for open source software is part of the companies and comes to the people and it's not for licenses to go into the US. Okay, but that's not a part. So in the past, in the last 20 years, and I'm doing open source for decades here in Germany, there has been a kind of, I call it, gentle person's agreement. Yes, you can use open source even for business reasons, also for the public, for the government, but you also have to pay and make sure that there's the kind of payment to the company for those who created the software. For the maintainer, who has, he needs the funding, as a private person, or also for the company who did it. And this worked for many decades. It worked quite well. Sometimes software was used for free. Sometimes they made a contract, software service, subscription, security updates. In general, it worked. But this agreement has been cancelled in the past, in the past few years, I think. Um, we open source companies, we rely on this gentle person's agreement. Because I have to decide if I create a new software, can I, can I release it as an open source software? Or do I have to restrict it? Do I have to keep the code by myself? Can I give it to the public? Can I give it to the community? Or is it um, my problem if I'm not paid afterwards uh, so I cannot uh, get my money back, we, which we, we spend? So at the end, the open source community needs for me the gentle person agreement, use it and pay if you can and if you need it, or live and let live. And this is something that is very important for me, and we had in the past with public partners. Um, they've ha they have had an interest in, in being fair and being honest to us in the open source community and in the open source business, but this was cancelled. This is a cuckoo. And if you wonder which one of the bows, uh, of those uh, two, two birds, it's the bigger one. The children is the big one. The cuckoo um, maybe is a symbol for me for what happened in the past. Because the cuckoo, he kills the other children, the eggs of the other birds. He is fed by the, by the parent bird, by, by, the, by, the, by the other one. And he earns 
um, he gets his food and he gets his power by somebody else's work, by the parents of the other bird. So for me, this is what happened here. In the past, we had the situation that open source was something new. It was new to the public, it was new for business. We also, most of the time, we had a kind of open source evangelist working in a company or working for a state, uh, providing open source knowledge, providing um, good talks internal, managing all the projects and say, okay, let's make something new, let's make something creative. We want to have, we want to introduce open source here. And they also had been part of the tender of the bidding processes when the government um, tries to buy software, they have a formal process. And they um, said, OK, we need support, we need service, we need a contract, um, let's do this. But in the past few years, and today, maybe open source is just a piece of software. We have commercial, traditional software, we have open source software, but I think a lot of people out there don't make that difference anymore between commercial software and open source software. They just want to buy it. So, Ask the market who can, bring, who can bring me the software, who has the best price for me, so let's use the price as an argument and let's just simply buy it. But this doesn't work for me with open source. They mostly have no idea um, how open source community works, how funding is um, realized, and what kind of, of organization we need in the open source community anymore. And for sure, as especially the public, the state, the government, uh, looks for open source software. We have projects worth 1 million, 10 million euros. So this attracts attention. This brings attention to other companies um, sharing, joining the market and uh, think that they can make a good, good cut here and um, offer open source software. So I call those companies the cuckoo. I have seen several cases in the last few years where they had aggressive prices really aggressive prices to get into the market. They catched all the public um, uh, fundings and all the public uh, biddings, the public tenders. But without partnership to those who have created the software, they're just selling it. They just do the work to implement, maybe in a good way or a bad way, but there was no no flow of finance to the owner of the software, to the, to the creator of the software, to the maintainer, or to the company who did it. So they had the benefit of the other one's work. And for sure, I think they kill those who created the software. They kill us. Because at the end, when there's no subscription, no service, no funding for those who created the software, and as better as my software is, as less support they will need, as less I have the chance to get something for my work. So even the manuf manufacturer itself, I think he cannot win anymore at the tender, because I have to calculate how to manage the software, how to create the daily work, how to run it in my data center, and also the development, the people I have to employ, my employees, and the money I needed to create those software. And uh, the cuckoo, he is just a part of those costs. He will always be cheaper than me, always. I cannot win against the cuckoo. The other problem is that as a manufacturer, I have a team of partners out there. Other companies working with my software, taking care about customers, providing knowledge, sharing all that stuff with other people, running it in their own data center, but looking for me and being a partner of me. They will also lose all the tenders, because if they plan to give me a share of the costs, the share of the income, pardon, to me as a manufacturer, they will also lose all the tenders immediately. So even as a loyal partner, I have to decide whether I want to lose all the tenders, or I, want, or I, will, I want to be still a loyal partner, uh, sharing and um, taking care about those who did the work. So, even my long-term partners, after some years, will have to bid against me. So at the end, it's impossible for me to win any tender anymore. The problem is if only one in the market out there cancels this gentle person's agreement and will always offer an aggressive price, he will win all the tenders and the whole system is destroyed. It's not just not nice. It's, it's a blocker. Nobody else can be better than he if he 
is uh, using an uh, aggressive strategy. In general, this is the benefit of open source. Yes, and this is why we are here. Everybody can do it. Everybody can use the software, and even the, the, the consulting companies, everybody can do this. You have the freedom of choice who is your partner in implementation and running the software. You have the freedom uh, of your partner. You don't have to go to the manufacturer. If, he, if you think he's stupid, use another one. Um, but now we have people who are not in open source anymore, who don't even maybe are not committed to open source. You just see a market. We have some companies here in Germany that just think it's easy to earn money, we have a nice pricing model, we will be the best with an aggressive strategy. They have never been in open source in the last two decades, but now they're winning a lot of um, open source tenders right now. So, yes, you can use as a partner uh, whoever you want, but at the end, to be honest, it's state IT, it's public IT, it's government IT, it's a real business. Um, we don't have this project just because it's nice to have, it's not just for fun, it's for business, it's for business continuity. We all rely on uh, working IT, so it's not just a game. And uh, yes, um, if you're running a commercial uh, open source solution as your business critical IT, you need support, availability, and security. So what will happen in the future if we don't come back to uh, working together with the manufacturer? Um, companies will win those tenders. They don't have a contract, a back-to-back -back software service agreement. If there's a problem, they can go to the user forum, to the mailing list. Maybe they will ask the manufacturer, yeah, we're using your software, can you help us? We have a problem. So what does the manufacturer should do? Working for free? helping with the mailing list. Maybe he has to work for free because uh, otherwise uh, people will tell the market out there and, 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 and the awareness will be that the software doesn't work. So maybe he has to fix the problem to save his own reputation, but he's not paid for it. I think also the IT projects will becoming worse and worse. More time, better results, uh, Better, as a worse, part of a pun, not better results. <laughs> More time, not good results, sorry. Um, maybe security issues, um, not the best strategy because experience is really important for that. And for all, also what we have seen, um, changes of the code, it's open source, feel free to adapt, great. But changes of the code have to be part of the upstream maintenance for the future. You can pay a lot of money to fork your own open source solution, then you can stay at it for, for years, uh, but this is not sustainability. Um, it's just a fork, it's a dead end. Um, so you need a partner who knows how open source works, how upstream is working, how you can do code commits, and how you can develop code that will become part of the next major release. But if those projects fail because of the bad knowledge of the parts of the members of the project, uh, open source faults in the public awareness, in the public um, news. Yeah? Uh, we had this in the last 10, 15, 20 years, several times, where open source projects um, yeah, have some disadvantages maybe, or maybe, have, they haven't, maybe it was not the right time there, but maybe they've done bad in a bad way. At the end, um, we had some rollbacks to commercial softwares, and I'm not sure if this was really necessary in any case. Actually, I have the real problem. I see, really, open source could die in Germany, at least. This is a market I know. Because if we are not able to earn money, commercial companies, we're not able to earn money to develop a new software, to get the money, to get the funding, to look for people, to found something really, um, to create it from scratch, we will not make it anymore. And to be honest, 80%, 90% of all of my income is for daily business. I cannot make money with the first 90% of my whole uh, product. Uh, I need the upper 10% to, to, to earn money and to pay the people and all that stuff. And so if I simply lose just 10, 15, maybe 20% of all of my tenders, my projects, then the whole business will break down. I'm not able to fund it. I'm not able to create something new. I will not, able, uh, I will not be able to, to pay my people. 
So we really need those huge lighthouse projects which we have out there, that Bavaria, Schleswig-Holstein, Thuringia, some parts of Germany, they're really fun projects. But we need those. And if there's a cuckoo in the bidding process stealing those, very fast the whole economic system will break down in this situation. What happens in two or three years? If I will shut down my business, other companies will shut down their business, who is the last man standing next year, after next year? So also for the public, what do you think, who can do the work for you, for you in two years and three years? Who can offer the software? Who will ever write the next major release of the software you are actually using right now? Maybe you got it for free, maybe you got it for cheap, um, aggressive, good pricing, but in two years there will be no next major release and no security updates anymore if you don't take care that those who created the software are able to survive and um, work. So, personally in my company and also at the Open Source Business Alliance and some other um, associations, we had some nice and interesting discussions in the last few months. How can we solve it? Because it's uh, easy to blame the problem and to say, ah, oh, everything is bad, but what can we do um, to solve it, to, to solve it? I think that we have to take care that the bidding process has much more attraction to quality, to the funding of the, of the manufacturer, and to uh, the contracts in, the, in those projects. I think that those who write the tenders, who, who make this process and the public, um, they have to be aware of their resp responsibility for the whole ecosystem here. I have to think that uh, I think that they have to be aware that um, they also make sh must uh, should make sure that the quality of the project um, is not only a question of the price but also of the partners and how it is organized. So I think we need a code of conduct how open source um, is sustainability. Uh, how we can ensure sustainability and how we can uh, procure open source software. So this is what, what I am working on, what we are working on it, to found a code of conduct and to, to, to look how it could be organized. And this is what I want to show you a little bit, what happens here. Uh, because if we have a nice and healthy open source ecosystem, then open source is for sure um, cheaper, more sustainable and gives me a freedom of choice and all that stuff, but it has to be healthy. So, when we have a public um, procurement tender, then we have different uh, possibilities on how to explore the market. Um, we can uh, do, uh, we can we can query the market. Or we can uh, talk to pu to publishers. We can talk to companies. Um, we can negotiate who is there and about pricing and models. And also, what happened in some some projects where I was part of, we had around about one year just talking, developing the final solution. So they had a long, long process in finding the real solution for their needs with us, with me and other competitors. Um, and only at the end, they started a real tender process where we had to bid to a solution which we have developed all together, which is also, I think, very great because this raises the quality. And uh, in that kind, we can uh, find a solution that really fits their need. Also, we have a and B criteria in Germany. A criteria is a must-have criteria. If you don't have that criteria, if you cannot fulfill it, you're out of the process, you cannot bid. So this is really a knockout criteria. And B criteria are soft criteria where you can get some scoring ports, some values um, um, to be better than somebody else in the process. Um, but most of the time, they're not really used. Most of the bidding process, and most of the tenders only say, we will give the tender to those who have the cheapest price. That's all. The price is all, everything. But this is no room, this left no room for quality, for other decisions, for, for the A and B criteria to raise the quality. So I think we have to work on the B criteria to make sure that better project partners can have more scoring points and uh, can win the tender, even if they're maybe a little bit cheaper, because they make sure that a share is given to the manufacturer. So. We started in several working groups founding those criteria and how to find it. And um, one of the solutions could be that there's a certificate. This is a sustainable um, company. This is a good 
uh, 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 self-understanding of, of those who bid here. Um, this could be located at the OSPA, the Open Source Business Alliance. We will have to discuss if this is a good or a bad idea because giving a certificate to companies and then they can bid or not is maybe a little bit difficult, but could be a good reason because we need something easy for those who are writing the tender, for those who are managing the bidding process. They need something that is easy and that they can understand and the certificate is always nice, easy and a kind of true on false. Or also to work on the A and B criteria to um, yeah, to, to, to negotiate um, uh, or to, to, to help them that they don't can say, oh, I don't have time, I don't have an idea, I don't know what to do, and the bidding process uh, is uh, very complicated. So we have to offer something that they easily can use, like a catalog, um, just in their bidding process. This is something how, this is a B criteria that I can imagine that could be interesting for us here. Um, so that um, I have to explain some, some, some space, some words, um, how changes in the project, how code changes could become part of the upstream. I have to explain what is my way on how to do it. Why can I make sure that it will be accepted upstream, if it makes sense for them? How can I make sure that I have the knowledge that the code has the right quality, that I know the right people, that it's not a dead end if we develop something for a state of Turing, maybe? And, um, this is something where I can say, yeah, zero to five scoring points with a weighting of 50, so maybe 250 evaluation points at the final. Maybe some parts are more heavier than other arguments. But maybe the cuckoo has nothing. Even he's not owning development teams. I don't know. But open source companies, or those who are really in the scene or in the, in the community, they will earn much more scoring points, um, up to five, if they maybe are even have a back-to-back -back contract with the maintainer or have uh, core developers in their own team because they're working with that software for decades and they're really in it. So if we have several parts of those B criteria in different ways, I think the better companies will always have more scoring points, will always be better, and if you have more scoring points, then your price can always be higher, because at the end, you win the tender if the price and the scoring point is the best off. So for those who, are not, uh, have, who, who don't have that kind of quality, they um, have, need a more aggressive price, and for those who are an open source community and taking part of us, um, they can earn some extra money in the bidding process to give it back to the open source community. So, at the end, first of all, it's not a nice, it's not rocket science knowledge. Uh, cheap is not cost effective. Uh, if, you, if you look for the price, you will pay it twice. Um, but normally everybody knows that. Um, if you want to have good partners in the future, you have to take care that they will survive. So, live and let live. And uh, pay attention that we don't have a monopoly or oligopoly in the future um, if only the cuckoos are left over and all the good companies are gone. For sure, open source procurement has to be sustainable and uh, we have to make sure um, that parasitic business models will not work and we are not playing that game with that and taking care that they're not winning the tenders. And um, for me, and I'm really concerned, I really have to make sure, or we have to be aware that the ecosystem, the open source ecosystem, is not on the way to die. If this will uh, carry on or will go on like it's, uh, it was in the last two years, I'm really concerned that um, as more and more as open source becomes professional and normal, that um, the part of the community that is very important for us um, is in danger. I don't know. This is 30 minutes in a very short amount of time, uh, but maybe now in the coffee break and we are open for questions and discussions and I'm really interested in getting your thoughts. Uh, so feel free to come to me and Wait, talk to me. Four, I want four more minutes, so you're lucky. I kind of cheated. You have four more minutes for questions. Any questions? Um, I, don't, I almost don't know where to start with this. Very, very interesting talk. Um, but I'll, I'll formulate one question. 
And that is what you mean by open source procurement. Because I think you're describing, um, let, let's say I'm a company, I'm a Cuckoo or another company, I put together a product using open source software and then I sell it. That's a commercial product by definition, isn't it? Or what do you mean by open source procurement? What is that? Um, I mean that the government uh, offers a tender so I can bid for a project. Um, their procurement to get software. Uh, this is what I call open source procurement. Maybe I'm wrong with the language, I don't know. Um, I'm not that fine with the English normally. Um, so, but if people who are not in software and even not in open source, they just look for the price, like they're buying a car or something else, some stack of paper. Yeah. But for sure, if you want to bundle my software or anybody else's software into your product, selling it, it's open source, feel free to combine and to do a good good a new product out of it. This is open source, nobody is against open source. But make sure that you are uh, uh, not using the other people's work without taking care of them. This is my problem, my intention. It's government procurement normally, yes, because they have those tender and bidding processes, but also some big companies, uh, they have European-wide uh, tender processes and bidding processes and acting like a government. Uh, so depends on the size of the company and the enterprise. Hinter dir? Uh, great talk, thank you. Um, to me, as a government entity of government body, it sounds like a knockout criteria um, to have within the tender, so good suggestion. Um, I would really have a, would be nice to have a talk with you about that, so uh, really great. I fully understand the question on um, having a code of contact about this topic, because right now it isn't there. And in the Dutch government, we don't have it yet about uh, open source. Yes, it's mentioned, but there are no criteria actually. So you actually see the commercial companies come in with an open source product, building support around that. So yes, um, to answer the question or the discussion a little bit, we see the same uh, challenge. Yeah, I also see your needs that you need something that you can rely on. So maybe it's the um, open source business alliance and other companies should give you a paper and a model and of simply usable A and B criteria that are proved by lawyers. This is what I think we should do. Um, so let's talk, would be nice. Yeah, and actually to add to that, um, as a government entity, you want some sort of support, um, a, a form of support. Um, and it would be great to have a company like yours um, stand behind the open source product and have some sort of level of support in there. So yeah, great. Thank you. Anybody else? Johan. Um, yeah, so open source, there's, there's not like one project that you're selling, but you're basically selling a whole stack. Your project might be the one that's sort of most important for this tender, um, but there's everything below it. There's libraries, there's the kernel or whatever, all of that. Any ideas on how to bring that in because it can't be part of the tender that you have to give to everybody in that stack. How, how can we solve that? How we, can we work with that? Good question. I don't have an answer to that, um, except that maybe also the um, big Linux distributions can take part and maybe they're also paying a lot of development in the general Linux system. Um, so you maybe uh, it's a good way to start and buying also license for the distribution itself, I don't know, but I don't have a final answer for that. Yeah. Um, this is true, there's never just one tool in a project, but most of the time, like an own cloud, a next cloud, an open project, an open exchange, and all that stuff, there's one major software, like an open talk, one major piece of software that is really the reason for that project, but for sure there's a whole Linux ecosystem, and we also have to take care that everybody can uh, continue working in that ecosystem. Thank you. All right, that was the last question. Yeah. Then thank you very much for your time. And also, if you want to talk, Miriam, you just want to raise your hand. 
because she's from the Open Source Business Alliance doing a great job there. Also, feel free to talk to Miriam. She's in the topic, and we had a lot of nice discussions about that in the past. Um, so have a good afternoon. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. And uh, happy to see you again so, one time. <laughs> <laughs>